So you've decided you want to raster. Well, today's video is going to show you how to do exactly that. We're going to cover two different options on rastering your image. One is known as natural rasterization or adding negative space to your image. And the other one is intentional rasterization where we add a different shape such as lines, circles, or diamonds into the image to create a more soft and more natural hand to the garment. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to take a look at our software. So this today, we're using Digital Factory software. And the first thing you want to do is make sure you're choosing your particular paper type. And you also want to make sure that you're choosing your particular size. We're going to start by importing our image bringing it in going to come over here and we're going to bring in one of our images here today we're going to work with a png and we're going to work with one of our favorite superhero characters so the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to start by knocking some color out of this image this is what's called natural rasterization what we're going to do is we're going to knock the red out of this image to create some negative space and we're going to print this on a red shirt. So we're going to be using the color of the shirt for the color in the design. To do this, we come over here, we right click on our job, we're going to go down to production plugins, and we're going to go to knock me color out. This is going to bring up our screen here. Here you're going to see you have an option to knock out several colors. But what we're going to do is we're just going to click on the red in the design. And you'll notice down here it knocks the red out of your design completely. If you want to know what your shirt's going to look like on a red shirt, click on shirt color. Click on your swatch here. Choose the color red. Tell it OK. And this will let you know what your design is going to look like once pressed to a red shirt. Keep in mind, all of the red that you see is going to be the shirt. So you want to have a very nice hand or feel to the shirt after it's pressed. Once done, tell it OK. All right, you'll see now we have a preview here of our design without any red in it. Now keep in mind, any time that you're printing a design that has a transparent background or that we've knocked the color out of, you always want to make sure that you choke your image. In order to choke your image, simply click on the color adjust option down here. Come over to processing options. Where it says choke here, we always start at about a three. Three is a really good place to start here, and you tell it OK. Briefly, all you're doing on choking your image is you're just restricting the white on the back of your image to where it's just not going all the way to the edge. Once you have that done, go ahead and spool your job or rip your job. It's going to go to a holding status here. Right click your job. Go down to View Raw Data. And what you can do is you get a preview of your image here. And you can change the background to your red. And pay no attention to the real colors here. This is just letting you know that the color you knocked out and the background is transparent. At this point, you can close this down. And you can go ahead and send this off to the printer. And that's adding some natural rasterization to your image or knocking color out of the image. So it gives it better washability and it also gives it a really nice hand or feel as well. The next thing we're going to take a look at is we are actually going to go ahead and knock black out of an image. To knock black out of our image, we're going to follow a lot of the same steps here. Again, knocking black out of your image is the same thing as knocking color out and doing what we refer to as natural rasterization. We're going to bring our job in once we have our paper type set here. This time we're going to choose an image. 
that has quite a bit of black in it. We choose our image and it loads up for us. Once your image loads up, you notice that this is kind of a thick image and it also has quite a bit of black in the image. And if we're going to press this against the black shirt, we definitely do not need to use all of these uh, black toner that's in the image. So the way we do that, we come over, we right click on the image, we go down this time to production plugins again, and we're also going to go over here to knock me black out. As you'll see, this is going to knock all of the black out of this image. What you'll also notice is in this image, you see that there are some translucencies in this uh, image. So what we want to do is we actually want to fill in some of those colors. In order to do that, we can come over here and we can drag the underbase slider up until we see these colors start to fill in. And then we can also drag the opaque slider up to help fill in some of those colors as well. Any place you see these checkers, these check boxes, we need to increase our opaqueness a little bit so we get rid of those. Once we have that done, we can come over here to click shirt color, and this will give us a preview of what our image is going to look like when pressed against the shirt. Once done, we tell it OK. And now we're going to let it edit out for us a little bit. Once we see the black has been knocked out of the image, we can come down here to color adjust, processing options, and remember we're going to set our choke to three. We tell it okay. And now we are ready to rip or spool our image. Once it goes to the holding status here, we're going to right click on our image, Go to View Raw Data, and here we get a nice preview of our image. Because of the way that this preview is set up, I actually recommend that you don't use a dark uh, background to check it, but rather use maybe a gray. If you're printing against black, then you can see more of the image here and how it's going to lay out. But keep in mind, this is really just a way to make sure we don't have any white backgrounds in our image and that all of the color that we've knocked out has actually been knocked out. Once we see our image looks okay, we're going to tell it okay. And we can go ahead and send this off to the printer. And that right there is really just kind of how you knock the black out of an image to help uh, create some more natural rasterization. We're going to look now at intentional rasterization, where we're going to add negative space in a pattern across our image. Okay, when we're talking about intentional rasterization, basically what we're doing is we are adding intentional negative space into the image, which is going to help our image be a little more washable and be a little more durable. A typical rule of thumb is when you want to uh, and natural rasterization is if you have probably two or three fingers with more of toner. If you'll notice up here in the panda's forehead, it starts to get a little thick here. So, and it could be a little thick around this area as well. So what we might want to do is add some more naturalization or natural rasterization to this image. And the way that we do that is we're actually going to uh, look at our image here and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to come over here. I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to go to properties. Once my properties box opens up, I'm going over here to color layer. Then I'm going to go all the way down here to ink removal. You'll notice over here, I have several options. I always encourage you to leave the frequency and angle alone. You really don't need to adjust this at all. The shape, you have about 23 different shapes you can see here. One of my favorite shapes is the line. For me, it seems to be a little more uh, modern looking. Uh, so that's what I like to use. 
Here you're going to adjust the hole size. The highest number is 255, which basically means you're not going to have any lines or any holes in your image at all. The higher that number, the more ink that's going to be printed, or toner is going to be printed. The lower that number, the larger your rasterization holes are going to be, or your lines are going to be, and the less toner that's going to be used. A good starting point is usually about 220. Uh, down he here, the uh, partial transparency, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, but when you're done, you tell this OK. <clears throat> and now, when you rip your job or spool your job, and here, remember, we're going to do the feel like a hacker to get those all open. OK, we're going to right click. Going to go to view raw data. And now you'll see I have these hole or these lines in my image of negative space. Okay, everywhere you see that line is going to be the color of the shirt. So in this case, it would be black in those lines there. If I want to make those lines larger, I can do that. I just close this down. I open my job back up down here in the lower right hand corner. I right click on the job again. I go to properties. I go to color layer, ink removal, and then I just make this number smaller to make my lines larger. Now we're going to rip our job again. Once it's ripped, I can right click and go to view raw data again. And as you can see now, the lines are actually bigger. So you see the lines are larger now. And what I can do also, let's say maybe the lines kind of aren't what you like to do. So what I would do is I would close this again, open my job up in the lower right hand corner. Right click, go to properties. Okay, go to color layer, ink removal. And this time, maybe I want to do the inverted round. I tell it, okay. I rip my job again. Once it goes to holding, I'm going to right click, go to view raw data, and now you'll see I have holes instead of lines. And that's pretty much adding intentional rasterization. There's a module that's in here that you can use. I actually think that you have better control using the properties options within the job. Um, the the module can be a little um, I guess the best word for it would be uh, punky at times, uh, a little overcomplicated, and it's just easier to use the properties options within the job um, itself. So if you have any questions or anything like that, please let us know and reach out to us. Uh, you can reach me at chill at themagictouchusa.com. You can also uh, log a support ticket at themagictouchusa.com as well as send us an email at support at themagictouchusa.com. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And looking forward to seeing what you guys are doing out there in the World Wide Web on Facebook.